Hi guys, I pre-ordered the A7 IV the instant it came out and I have loved him every second that I've had him. I also pre-ordered the FX30 the instant this came out and I have loved him every second that I have had him. Now here's the thing, is I recommend both these cameras highly depending on who you are, but a lot of people have been asking me if you could only choose one because they are pretty close in price and depending on where you live in the world, they can actually be the exact same price. And for those people who are asking me, I am saying that the uh, a7 IV is going to suit more people in more situations, so uh, we should talk about that. So the reason I'm doing this video is I saw a new YouTuber's video as Sad Studios. He's a stay-at-home dad studios. The irony is he is a very happy man, but he was uh, saying why he chose the a7 IV over the FX30 and it got me thinking a lot of the people who are asking me the question about the a7 IV versus the FX30 and I'm talking for video only we'll leave the photo stuff till the end but for video only the a7 IV covers more bases for more people now the FX30 don't get me wrong I will talk about why this camera is fantastic and why the people who are buying it should be buying it and the thing is though those people kind of know who they are. The people who are trying to choose between cameras because they're not sure what they want out of a camera, those are the people this video is directed at. Now, I paid full price for both of these cameras. I used my own wife's hard-earned money, so there's no bias here. I just really thought that I could use both of these cameras for my work, and I do. Now, you see, this full-frame beauty, this a7 IV, is fantastic in low light. It's not just because it's a full-frame camera. This particular full frame camera is absolutely fantastic in low light. The FX30 is not that great in low light, but this guy is just in whatever situation you throw him in, you're going to get clean images. In fact, at every ISO, including the base ISO of 800 there in the Cine EI in FX30, the uh, base ISO of 800 in S-Log3 on the a 74 is cleaner. It's cleaner at all ISO. So if you're looking for the cleanest possible footage and you want, I still have a cold, you hear my voice breaking, the cleanest possible footage, the camera that would be best in low light, then you gotta go with the a 74 Another very big one is dynamic range. There's more dynamic range in the a 74 So if you have a scene, you're on a beach, you got rocks in the shade, you have a nice blue sky, you're gonna capture more of that information with the a 74 Whereas I think the FX30, it's a situation where uh, you are in a studio, let's say, or if you're outside, you have things lit properly uh, and you have the right amount of diffusion around, the uh, FX30 is more for people doing pro shoots. Also, as I showed in my last couple of videos, the stability is a little bit better on the a 74 and the image is a little bit sharper down sampling from the 7K sensor as opposed to the 6K sensor of the FX30. Those two things aren't deal breakers, but they are nice to know. Another big one for the a 74 is that it can go into APS-C crop mode. So if you want to do video and you want to use those cheaper APS-C lenses, cheaper for the most part, I should say, APS-C lenses, you can just stick them on the a 74 and it will go into crop mode. So you don't necessarily have to buy the big expensive full frame lenses. You can still do the APS-C lenses. And in fact, the rolling shutter uh, when you're in APS-C crop mode is better on the a7 IV than the FX30. When the a7 IV is in full frame mode and the FX30 is in its regular mode, the rolling shutter is about the same. But APS-C crop mode, definitely better for rolling shutter. And of course you can use the full frame lenses if you so desire to get that extra separation, to get that creamier bokeh if you want it. And uh, that is another really big advantage of the a7 IV. The viewfinder is extremely useful when you're out in a sunny environment. The FX30 does have a better screen than the a7 IV, but that can't compensate for really bright sunshine. It's a little bit better to look at than the a7 IV screen, but really, what really helps is having the viewfinder so that you can block out that sun when you're trying to see your shot. And now, of course, I have to mention the photos. The FX30 takes one photo in electronic shutter, whereas the a7 IV is one of the best photo cameras in the known world. This thing is an absolute beast of a photo camera, so if you are even thinking about taking photos at some point in your life, the a7 IV, to have that photo capability right there, it's as capable of a photo camera as it is a video camera, a true hybrid, absolutely fantastic if you want to take yourself some professional snappy snaps. Hey now, I am not hating 
on little Felix right here. I've named him Felix after all. That's uh, my little Dougie film memory right here, the uh, ZV-E10, and Harvey is my a7 IV. I do name all of my cameras. That makes it so hard to sell them later. I never sell anything. Anyway, what am I talking about? But the thing is, I love this camera and the people out there who are going to buy it, and there will be many, they just know that they need the features of this guy. I consider this thing a workhorse. This, to me, it reminds me a little bit of my GH5 when I bought it in, in that I'm just thinking for video, it's just, it's got that fan in it. It's never gonna overheat. Look at the buttons and the layout here. Look at this, the ISO and the white balance on top, big red record button. The thing lights up when you press record. Look on the back here. You got your zebras, you got your peaking. The thing is just laid out like a video camera and that is very useful. The Cine EI menu, just nice and quick to get to all of the functions that you need. The quarter, 20 threads all around it so you can rig it up with or without a cage. It's just for people who want to stream or uh, do Zoom calls and you're gonna do them for hours and hours. I know my wife, she's always on the Zoom for hours and hours. So, you know, she would probably wanna use, I'm not gonna let her use it, but she'd probably want to use this because with the fan and it's just it's just gonna keep on going a real workhorse and you can still use it outdoors but it's in more of a professional setting where your lighting is set up properly and you have your diffusion up and things are just set up to shoot pro shots this camera is for that. Still has the 10 bit 422, the two card slots. You can attach the uh, XLR handle that can come with it if you pay a little bit extra, and then just run your mic right into this with this nice, tidy little setup. And of course, the 4K 120. I can't forget about that. That is one of the features that I bought this guy for because as much as I use the A7 IV when I'm doing product showcase and things like that, I don't have a 4K 120, and this is what this guy did. So, like for me, shooting documentaries, if I, I take an A7 IV, and then I take this guy and I have two good angles. They're easy to match and they both have the redundancy with the two card slots. I just, this thing for me serves so many purposes and I love him a lot. But for the general user, the people who aren't necessarily sure what they need out of their camera, the a7 IV, it just covers more bases. It is just more versatile. It is also an excellent photo camera. So as long as you don't need the 4K 120 and you're not doing things where you're in very warm environments doing super long takes because some people have had overheating issues. Me personally, not, but some people have. And I know this guy will be better for the overheating, but if this is your situation, you're running and gunning, as the kids like to say on YouTube. You know, this guy here, it's probably for most people. So this is just one handsome man's opinion of what would be better for most content creators. But you know what? I don't know everything. I know it look like I know everything, but I don't know everything. So write down in the comments which you prefer and why. And uh, because that starts a discussion and it helps other people who are trying to decide between these two cameras who aren't necessarily going for the things that I talked about in this video. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.